we'll start off with the latch plate design we are going to replicate the key dimensions and then make use of the commands that we have learned in this today's session to replicate the diagram at the earliest possible time so to us that as the first step we always ensure that our units are all in millimeters as per the diagram and then the paper size that is the limits that are going to be set and so the lower corners are always 0 and 0 and let us retain the same dimensions as 420 and 297 and then zoom back to your resistance to make sure you are within the operating range so now let us first construct the the overall external dimension so consider this as a normal machining operation so for this latch plate dimension the machining plate is has to be a width 63 mm and a height of uh, 35 uh, or roughly 36 mm so towards this let us construct the drawing first so uh, let us construct a rectangle that's going to be say let's uh, start this point from here and the next point the x axis it should going to be 63 mm whereas in y axis if you could see the distance between those two holes the four holes uh, part is 30 mm and the fillet area is 5.6 mm so on a total the distance is 41.2 mm of height so let us zoom back to this so this is going to be the rectangular plate onto which the machining operation that's going to be enacted so now let us leave out the fillet area to the last so now let us draw the key dimension next is the specification of the circular holes so now the circular hole dia is of 5 mm and that is located uh, from the center point of the center axis 15 mm in length so towards this let us draw a reference line for our analysis so let us draw reference line as for now and towards this let us uh, make it to be a construction line for our sake so you can do it by two ways in this line type you can add a center line that is going to be at for so you can use for the center line command that is already there so you can include this object and then again select the properties and then select the line type to be center so this is one way of doing it the other way of referencing a center is in the annotate command you have a center line option so it means that so the center line for these two objects will get enabled so this is one way of doing the plotting the center line for the record object so now before proceeding off with the whole drawing let us also draw the inner segment because we have a inner referencing to the inner cutaway section so towards this let us try and offset this object but if you offset the object to mimic the inner surface what you can see is this entire rectangle will get offset inside so let us first explode this component into individual sectors so if you select this object and click on enter now this object is broken into a, a constituent lines so now let us uh, go with the offset command and this uh, offset distance to be 9.4 mm and the object to be offsetted is this okay the, the distance need to be mentioned distance and object and the point on which side is getting, going to get offset so this is the offset for the innermost left hand side surface so now let us try and offset for the other line so we will reference this object to be offset here. but as it is a center line we are not able to do it so let us construct one more line here along the center this is a pseudo reference line and then invoke the move command for this object with this base point and then on the distance is going to be 8 mm so now we have constituted something with this 
So now we will use the extend command and select these two objects of interest and then extend this as well as using shift command we trim out this. Okay, the center line is also been selected. So we will select only these two components. And then shift select for trimming this. So now we have obtained this innermost part of the circle. So the next point is the curvilinear element that we have. So that is a combination of two circles, one a smaller one and the larger one. So the smaller most circle is of radius 4 mm, whereas it's located at a distance of 33 mm from the rightmost part of the plate, but that lies on the same axis. So let us again use the same circle command and then specify the base point as from here as an extension. So on the x axis we are going across minus 33 and no displacement y. Okay, so at a minus 33 mm of length, so we will be specifying the radius as 4 mm. So this is the first circle. Next is the second circle that again has the same reference point but with a 20 mm radius. So we will construct the circle again with this geometric center and with a radius of 20 mm. So this is the object that we have got. So now you can see this. This circle is going to intersect the this object onto the next surface. So let us for a while now create the mirror option. But before that let us you know truncate this line intersecting line or okay let us proceed with this mirror. Select this circle and then mirror across this point. So now this is the point of intersection. So next again we have to have a intersecting line at this point. So we will again draw offset a line from this point, this line or pseudo line and then moving it from this point to a length of 6 mm. So there you go, we have got the different dimensions that we want. So again, for this object to get intersected, rather uh, the circle is soft at this point. So we need to mirror this circle also. Or rather, we'll select these two components together and also this. Along this point to complete the drawing that is required. So now we can prune up the lines that are not required for it. So towards that let us invoke, ok, let us zoom back to the extents to have a clearer view. So now use the trim command and the object that's need to be trimmed are all this along with the circle. So this is not required but nevertheless let it be there. Ok, so now after selecting the objects, now the object that's need to be trimmed. Let us use the fence command and see that this 
it's going to go and these lines are going to go next we have these lines so similarly we have all these lines here okay so we have eliminated this also but no problem we can replicate it so now you can use the fence command again to remove this line as well as these now we are using the individual segments of the trim command to remove of the non essential parts so now these are independent elements that are not required we can remove them too and in case this doesn't work out so no issues so we can still remove them off and then replicate the object that we have got here again so it's a combination so depending on your uh, you know work style you can uh, do it in whatever order you want you can also practice by this and then have an efficient way of replicating this and achieving them in a faster way so this is the so now we have got the innermost section we can also trim off this right so we have got this inner line so now let us uh, uh, draw the next part so here next referencing is positioning the cut surface in this part so towards that the referencing is with respect to the holes so now let's draw the holes that are uh, required so the circle is going to be get positioned from this uh, reference point from here so from this base point on the x axis is going to get displaced by 5.6 mm and in the y axis is going to be displaced by 15 mm so with this the radius is 5 mm so this is the object that we have sorry the radius is going to be uh, 3 mm so let us draw the holes again so from this base point the holes of 3 so now let us uh, do a rectangular array to replicate the let us array rectangle to replicate this object so the number of columns is 2 and the number of rows is again 2 and the distance between them is going to be 35 mm and the y axis distance is going to be 30 mm so now using this we have got the holes that are positioned so the next part is now to the uh, rightmost chamfering that needs to be done so here let us start off with two lines so the first reference point is through this an extension of this so it's so let me turn on the auto mode on so an intersection of this turning off auto so the line let us uh, say an arbitrary line distance of say 50 mm with an angle of 15 degrees so this is the first line that we have drawn so now let trim off this uh, line with an offset line from this reference so from this drawing what we can see is 
this length is 5.6 mm and then you have the distance of uh, 35 mm here and uh, if you subtract the overall length and again with this 16 mm and from the overall 6.63 uh, mm you can say the offset distance is this distance is going to be 6.4 mm so let us offset by a 6.4 mm distance of this object onto this point so alternatively you can achieve this by using a trigonometric calculation to arrive at this length so that you can directly specify the hypotenuse during your length definition but right now we are just exploring the easiest way of doing it so the next line again is going to be referred from this intersection point and then again include angle between the line to be drawn and this surface is going to be 135 so for a total distance of 180 degree so it's going to be 45 degrees with reference to the, the remaining angle so this again you can set an arbitrary length of say 15 uh, 15 mm okay let me do it again with a relating reference of 15 mm with an angle of 45 degrees so now we have got those surface now we can use trim command to select all the objects of reference and now let's use the fence command to remove all those are, that are not required these have been removed and this is just a reference line so we'll take off this and similarly okay before mirroring the features one thing that is left is again the filleting of this edge and this edge we have a command called fillet but let us not use that right now we'll use the circle command again so this is again to be referenced from this point so radius is going to be 5.6 so we can either do it this way or we can draw the circle tangent to these two lines so we have the option to do both so now let us use the tangent circle option for this area so now uh, because we don't have a center point reference for this circle so here we will use the circle and tangent tangent radius option so the first tangent object is this and the second tangent option is this and the radius is 2.5 mm so based on this this object is also get position so now we can use the trim command so for, uh, we are going to use the trim command for this as well as this object and now the trimming surface is going to be this and then again this so alternatively this surface will go up and this surface will go up so now we have attained the fillet options so now we can replicate these objects these lines onto the other surface so let us select the object first so these are the features that we are going to mirror across the line so you can always toggle between the ortho mode off and on using the effect button so that your axis is all maintained same so now again you can use the trim command to you know now let us select this all because these all surface are going to interact so now the fence option to remove these surface then these surface and also this one so there we go so now we have completed the uh, required latch plate diagram using a combination of the trim command as well as the offset command so we will summarize this week's learning so what we are seeing was the different editing commands that were available to us with the text properties that is we looked into the single line text next we dwelled upon into the multi line text then also we looked into the various properties that were available to us that is the the uh, style command and then we looked into the color command and applying those commands to the object and seeing how it varies 
and also we looked into the line type that can be used and in order to edit the object we looked into additional command for selecting or filtering the uh, objects that are of uh, interest using the quick select and also to edit the properties of individual object using the pick properties command so next what we did was we looked into several editing techniques that will help us to quicken the drawing time that is we looked into scale command extend join trim rotate lengthen and stretch so what we saw was this stretch and lengthen is kind of similar and also it goes along with the these to compensate button we also saw in the powerful tools of trim and extend wherein they compensate each other and when invoked the extend to, uh, command can also be used trim command when holding down the shift button likewise when employing the trim option they can also make use of the extend command in a single tool so those are two powerful tools that we looked into and also we employ these tools into our sample drawing that we looked into and parallelly we also looked into the scale and the join command to see how it impacts the objects so with this we'll conclude week 4 of the autocad session